couple of Look at that. bars of oh gold. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Mate. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for choosing to watch the video. Uh, in this one, we are fishing for cruising carp, um, but we're doing it at a lake that off, uh, offers other species as well. Um, you know, there's some tench in here, there's ropes, there's rod, and to be honest, it's just nice to get out and uh, enjoy the sunshine and do a bit of fun fishing. What we'll do, we'll have a quick look at the lake and then I'll take you through exactly how I'm tackling it today. The lake looks absolutely stunning in the sunshine today. It's three and a half acres in size. It's kind of a mixed fishery with roach and rod and some other species. It's got some really decent tench, but we're here for the specimen cruising carp. So, tried it on the far bank, it's not happening. I've seen a lot of fish rising in the middle. So I'm gonna wrap up about four or five rod lengths and just try out there. So I'm just going to quickly take you through my feeder rod. It's a Trilogy rod again, it's got the power quiver at the top which is equivalent to a 1.5 tip. On the reel we've got 8 pound line that's coming through to a flatbed feeder, quick chain swivel in there, small sleeve, about a 4 inch hook length that is 6 pound fluorocarbon and a small size 14 hook and onto that, onto a short hair got a tiny piece of rubber corn. Uh, it's not pop-up corn, not buoyant corn, uh, but it is fake corn. It's just gonna sit on the bottom. What I'm gonna do on the flatbed feeder, what I'm putting on it is krill and squid ground bait, with two millimeter krill pellets in here. And what I'm gonna do on the feeder I'm going to press some of the ground bait into the feeder but I'm going to do it really loosely because I'm wanting to, it to actually fall off the feeder on impact on the surface because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast out about four times um, and hit the clip each time um, with the intention of it actually falling off the feeder and creating a little bit of a patch before then on the fifth time round I'm going to actually compress it onto the feeder much more firmly so that it stays on the feeder and that's the one that when I cast it out, I'm going to leave it. Um, probably only again for about half an hour or so, maximum. But really what I've done there, I've done four casts just to get some bait out there, almost like a mini spod. And then on the fifth one, I've left the feeder in. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get a take on that. So there we go. That's what it looks like on the flatbed feeder. Um, what I'm going to do, you can see at the moment, I've got the hook bait not buried in the feeder obviously some people do do that what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to chop and change sometimes going to leave it trailing uh every now and then i'll try tucking it inside the feeder and i'll just see uh you know if if either works better uh and and then carry on just fishing in that way this is the last one so we're going to actually push it on a lot harder we don't want it to fall off the feeder this time. And it's a tenth, so not the cruise from the raft. Beautiful but conditions for it, look at it. Look fantastic. at it in the sunshine. Look at that. <laughs> I saw them rolling there. Yeah. They were telling you where to fish. Thing is, it's, uh, I don't know, it's sometimes it's, you know, it's obvious to go and fish that far bank. Yeah. But yeah. I've always learned fish where you can see fish. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. fish where you can see fish. I know it sounds really basic, but, oh, he's a little cute, isn't he? Oh, oh, oh Christ, I'm not. He's all right, he's out. 
<laughs> he did, didn't he? Where you go, mate. First bud. Nice one, mate. Not been fishing very long, and we've got a lovely little tench. Oh, I'm going to get him back quite quickly because it's very hot today. Just on a flatbed feeder small bit of sweet corn on the hair. Hopefully we'll get a few more of these. hat off so you can see me um, yeah so pleased with that little tench uh, that happened quite quickly um, uh, we've got the rod straight back out again before I left it in the water cast out with fairly loose feed on the flatbed feeder two or three times left it the fourth time when it was a little bit more compact um, and yeah fingers crossed we'll get that cruiser oh yeah rubber corn. Uh, no, it's a carp. No. I think it's a cruiser, but I'm not sure. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> We're really, really hoping for one of these today. We've got one fairly early on. So I'm over the moon. Look at this little bar of gold. Isn't he stunning? Flatbed feeder, krill and squid ground bait, two mil krill pellets, uh, short rig, rubber corn. It's a hot day, so I'm gonna get him back quickly, but I am so pleased with this little fella. So absolutely over the moon with that crucian. We weighed it, it was two pound two. So not a huge fish, but I've not caught a huge amount of crucian. So was over the moon with that, I really, really was. It's actually been uh, at least an hour or so, maybe two hours since caught that fish. Uh, and it's gone very quiet on the feeder rods now. Um, Dan's with me, he's had a couple of tents, so he's doing, he's doing well. Um, but yeah, we, we're starting to struggle a bit now. Uh, maybe not surprising. We're, we're getting through to sort of like the midday sun and it is boiling up. How hot is it, Dan? 25 degrees? It's got to be about 27 degrees. Yeah, about 27 degrees. So it's boiling, boiling up. Um, and I think, you know, you probably expect this through the middle of the day. Um, but hopefully we'll catch a, a few more fish before the session's out. Might not happen until late afternoon once it starts to cool down but it won't stop us trying and uh, yeah I'll up you, update you again soon. I'm going to take you through the float rod that I'm using. Um, what I have found is that with Crucian carp they are very very delicate when it comes to feeding and when it comes to bite detection. Uh, everything's scaled right down you know, I've got a four pound line. Uh, I'm fishing with size 16 hooks. Um, and as a result of this, you also need a very forgiving rod. So I've got the 1.5 power quiver tip on my Trilogy. 
which is really nice and soft and it's gonna uh, facilitate me using this light tackle. As I said, I'm fishing four pound line. I don't go any lower than that because there are some fairly decent sized tension here. I've got uh, like a quill style float, as you can see there. I've got the bulk of the shot up near the float. And then I've got about five foot, cause it's five foot that I'm, I'm fishing there. Fishing a couple of very small shot, just sinkers, just down by the hook, just a couple of inches up and a size 16 hook. What's really important is because the, the bites are so delicate, I want to shot the float down so I can just about see the tip. And in terms of the bait, I just want this to be touching the bottom. Uh, those, those sinkers, they'll be just, just on the bottom with the hook bait just a couple of inches along from that. So only just touching the bottom. On the hook, I'm gonna fish with casters, literally one single caster, and I'm gonna feed little and often with casters to try and catch some of these cruisions. So there you go, that's what I'm doing with the left hand rod, just fishing it. I started really close to the pads in the edge. What I've done, because I wasn't getting bites there, I've just moved it out slightly. So maybe, you know, half a rod length or so off the back of the pads. And uh, now I'm starting to get the odd hit on the float. Hopefully, uh, yeah, we'll get a fish on that soon. Really, really struggling to get a bite on this float. Just plumbing up a slightly different spot. Just wanting it so that the bait just touches the deck. Let's move the weights up. And now we've got no weight at all down by the hook at all. Also tried casters, I've tried corn, I've tried pellet. I'm going back to corn, give that another little go, I think. Let's give that a go. Bit of an up day, it is boiling hot now, like really, really hot. Two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, it died basically a couple of hours ago. Um, I, I keep switching it up, been trying a few different things. Um, I've now got soft pellets, soft hookable pellets on the float rod. I've, um, I've tried a few different spots, I've tried a few different baits. Um, on that I've been playing around with how much weight I've got down near the hook. This is on the float rod. Um, I've tried the hookable pellets, yeah, I've tried casters, I've tried corn and I just can't get a bite on the, on the float rod at all. Um, it doesn't really come as a surprise. I think finesse float fishing probably isn't my strength. I do a fair amount of float fishing, but normally it's for, you know, like carp and, um, you know, reasonable sized tench, where you can kind of get away with slightly thicker lines, slightly bigger hooks. And, um, you know, normally I'm fishing AAA or even a swan shot down near the hook. And when it lifts up the bait, you know, float lays flat, lift method, bang, wallop. Uh, but this is something else. This is a real test of your sort of finesse float fishing, uh, which which isn't my strength um, at all, <laughs> which is becoming quite apparent now, uh, as I really am struggling on the float. Can't can't get a bite. Doing what I can, but I'm struggling a bit. moving the rods around regularly now. Float and the feeder. I think the midday sun, well, I mean, it's coming up at two o'clock now. I've not had anything for a couple of hours or so. It's just got so, so hot. But we'll keep moving the rods around and hopefully we'll get something. So to be honest, um, struggled through this afternoon a bit. It's been roasting hot. Um, we're just coming into the evening now, quarter past five, uh, and it's starting to cool down, thank God. Um, 
Dan's done all right through the afternoon. He's had a few tench, um, nothing huge, but uh, he's been getting steady action. Um, I'm gonna make some changes um, based on what Dan's been having. Um, here is my flatbed feeder. You can see it there. Uh, I'm keeping the hook length exactly the same, but now I've decided to change to using uh, fake caster on a hair. Don't know if you can see that. Um, so I'm gonna switch to that and hopefully I might get a couple more. Um, certainly I feel a bit more confident as we go into the evening. He's a cruiser. Quite it's about the first bite I've had in about three hours, look. Ooh. I've waited for that bite for so long. <laughs> to wait to the end of the day, we've got another. It's been brutal, really hot. No action through the middle of the day. And I've got this one, just as it's time to pack up and go home. I've got it on the float, which is cool. These are stunning. So quite a brutal session there, what with the heat, but I caught some nice crucians, so I was really, really happy. Um, we, I actually came back a few days after that, um, similar sort of conditions, boiling hot, and this time all the action came to the float rod. Gotta be a bit careful, because I've only got four pan liners, 16 hook. caught several decent tench on the float rod, including some that really tested the light tackle. After a few of those, we eventually got a bite from that cruisin. It's a cruisin. God, they don't fight like the tench. Thank God. with casters in the edge on the float had a couple of tench and now we've hit the jackpot with this character stunning stunning cruising carp just right by the pads in the sunshine does it get better and as i was photographing that fish dan got in on the action here we go what we got here there's one. <laughs> Just taking the photos of that. And look what Dan's got. Yeah. <laughs> what a beauty, what mate. Saying, yeah. Oh, well happy. Well chopped. Look at that beaut. Look. Beaut. A couple of look at that. bars of oh gold. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> So really pleased, uh, yeah, had some nice tench and uh, some stunning crucians. Um, not setting the world on fire in terms of the size of the crucian, all two pounders, so lovely fish. Um, and you know, maybe we'll come back, back out later in the summer and see if we can get that three pounder. So we've got the rivers opening soon, literally they're opening next week. 
Uh, so I don't know what I'll be fishing for. Wouldn't surprise me if we've got char barbel and stuff like that coming up, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that and sharing it with you. But until the next one, thanks again for choosing to watch the video. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. I'll see you in the next one.